Hello. It's great that you can join us for our daily devotions, which this week are going to be looking at 1 Corinthians 15. If you don't, don't know me, my name's David Charlton, and I'm one of the readers here at St John's Church in Hartford. 1 Corinthians 15 is a great chapter. Paul writes to the Christians that lived in Corinth about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This week we're going to look at that chapter. It's not going to be a Bible study. It's not going to be an exposition. I'm afraid if you want that sort of thing, you need to go and look elsewhere. But it's an opportunity for us to reflect on a few verses at a time and hear God speaking to us. So today I want us to look at verses 3 to 8. For what I received, I passed on to you as in first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Peter and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me also, as to one abnormally born. It's likely that the first few verses of that reading are an early Christian creed, a forerunner of what we say in church most Sundays when we say the creed together to declare what we believe, but that Christ died for our sins and was buried and on the third day rose again was part of that early Christian creed. But for Paul it wasn't something that he just said in church in a Sunday. It was something that he really believed. I wonder, do you remember the 1990s? Well, some of you might be saying straight away, well, of course not. I wasn't born, I was only a very small child. And that's fair enough. But I guess if you remember the 1990s, you remember that horrendous massacre at Dunblane Primary School. I take you back to that event because that awful massacre is about the same distance in time away from us now as the resurrection of Jesus was from when Paul wrote this letter to the Corinthians. It's about a quarter of a century ago. Now, I wasn't in Dunblane, thankfully, on the day of the massacre. But I guess if I went to Dunblane, I could find people who were there, people who witnessed it for, for first hand, who saw the horrendous events unfold. They would be the witnesses. And similarly, Paul says that the same is true of Jesus' resurrection. He says Jesus appeared to Peter, then to the disciples, and then to more than 500 people who saw him, most of whom are still alive. He doesn't name them, he doesn't tell us who they were, but any investigative journalist worth their salt would have been able to go and find some of those 500 and hear their first-hand accounts of encountering and seeing the risen Jesus. You see, Paul was absolutely convinced that Jesus had risen from the dead. It wasn't a matter of faith was a matter of just a creed or statement. It was something that he really believed. He considered it to be a fact. I wonder sometimes, do you, like me, have doubts about the Christian faith? Do you find yourself in an odd moment, perhaps thinking, have I imagined it? Have I over-exaggerated? What if it's all just a mistake, just my perception? And at a time like we are today, with this pandemic ranging, it's easy for us to have doubts. 
But what I found is in those moments, I've often been taken back to the resurrection. If Christianity isn't true, how do I explain away what happened at the resurrection? How do I explain away those 500 witnesses who saw Jesus Christ risen? How do I explain away the transformed lives of the disciples who went from hiding in fear to proclaiming the gospel of Jesus? You see, the resurrection of Jesus is a fact. Frank Morrison set out to write a book to prove that Jesus had arisen from the dead. He called his book, Who Moved the Stone? In researching and writing the book, he came to the one conclusion, the only conclusion he could draw, that Jesus had risen from the dead. We can take great confidence in Jesus being alive. And the reality of the resurrection contradicts and is an antidote to any doubts in our thinking. It also makes Jesus unique because there have been other religious leaders, other people who have had thousands and millions of followers, but they've all died. You can go and see their tombs. You can go and visit where they're buried. Not Jesus. Jesus is alive. And that means that we don't just merely worship a historical character or look to someone in the past, but we worship a living God who's alive today and can be with us today. That's great news, isn't it? Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the certainty of the resurrection. We thank you for those witnesses that Paul knew. And Father, we thank you for the comfort and the certainty that we can take from that resurrection of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you, you're a living God. And we can have a relationship with that living God today because Jesus is alive. Amen.